okay we can uh, continue now I'm okay, okay. Uh, let yeah. me just uh, give me a minute let me okay. introduce the professor uh, <laughs> dr uh, kashif nisar uh, basically is an associate professor and founding vice chancellor uh, vice chairman of ieee a subsection in his university in malaysia uh, dr kashif basically is a faculty of computing and informatics uh, he has earned his post doctorate degree from university of auckland and his doctorate degree uh, from malaysia uh, the good thing of the dr kashif is he has published more than 160 national and international papers and he has published these papers in the different research journals uh, dr kashif's actually the area of specialization is computer networking and information technologies uh he basically he served in the different universities and uh, he delivered his lectures as a guest speaker even in different international universities and he is basically is the writer of the sub few chapters in the different books uh dr kashif now is working as an associate professor in the university of ums so now over to the dr kashif please if you want to say few thing about your uh, profile or the biography please you are welcome otherwise now over to the dr kashif and students if you have any questions at the end of this i mean the sessions you can raise these questions okay dr kashif is here with you people we are also here and please uh, make a discipline and listen carefully thank you dr kashif once again over to dr kashif okay thank you prof uh, for my uh, introduction and i really appreciate it is my pleasure i will give my talk to bath and spa university at uh, uae and basically we have finished our work today now uh, here we have 7 pm but you have i think 3 pm 4 hours we uh, move ahead uh, compared to ua <clears throat> okay uh, now i you first i would like to know you can see my screen now yes yes look okay, that's great because uh, i am familiar about zoom webex google meet and other tools but uh, that is my first time experience on this space uh, tool but it's okay because we are we are learning uh, so that's good okay uh, first of all i would like to uh, introduce my university maybe uh, in future maybe your student maybe want to do some mobility program or maybe some short research stay okay basically uh, malaysia is uh, we can say a muslim country 60% uh, muslims uh, 30% chinese malaysian and 10% indian malaysian the total uh, 100% population like divided in three different races three different religion but they live very uh, harmony in the country and basically we have two uh, islands one is in a kuala lumpur that is a capital another that is uh, we can say west part and i am in a east part i am in a world biggest island after greenland uh, it is called borneo island it's divided among three countries malaysia indonesia and brunei so basically uh, my university is a public university we have about 20000 student in campus and in malaysia normally student live inside campus something like a boarding school style and we have 5000 employee 1000 academic staff and our university uh, we, our university is a uh, front of beach because we have a marine science department as well as we have 16 faculty inside 16 faculty we have different schools 
and i am basically in a faculty of engineering and we have a faculty of, then we have further faculty of computing and informatics university of malaysia sabah okay today uh, now i would like to move forward about my specific title future technology empowering the fourth industrial revolution internet of things and cloud computing why i i would like to talk about future technology because computer science and electrical engineering basically emerging technology change every second not every day if someone from maybe software engineering he or she need to change uh, every day because softwares change every day every day new tools come every day new uh, programming uh, codes come so that's why they have to update themselves and also in networking also they have to update robotics ai everything we have to be update ourselves every time fourth industrial revolution basically it is uh, like uh, we have a different industrial revolution i will discuss in my further slides Uh, such as uh, right now we, this term from where it came it came from germany and world economic forum uh, president he mentioned first time fourth industrial revolution so basically currently if we are from computer science electrical engineering then fourth industrial revolution is very important for us after that we have internet of things you know internet of things means like uh, we have heterogeneous networks and such as a pda mobile notebooks uh, laptops and other things we can connect via wifi ieee 802.11 standard and of course cloud computing that time i did my undergraduate 1.44 mb floppy drive more than enough for me but now i think 1 terabyte flash <laughs> drive or maybe hard drive not enough because the cisco say by 2021 our 80% traffic will be video so that's why we have to prepare for cloud computing as well as let's move forward oh, okay okay it's just okay the fourth industrial revolution of an internet of things outlines okay. internet of things smart home technologies internet of things and banking 4.0 internet of things 4.0 in agriculture focus on iot aspects then ir 4.0 and tourism last but not least conclusion okay this diagram or figure very important because if we will talk about ir then we have a different versions uh, like in 18th century end of 18th century we have first uh, mechanical loom loom means they make some something uh, cotton or some uh, fabric or something means that the, that is a first mechanical loom then industrial 2.0 we have assembly lines uh, for example vehicle assembly line and we can uh, make vehicle on assembly lines and make our life easy after that in 1970 we have first programmable logical control medicon 084 1969 basically that is something like a robot robotic then we can use these things for assembly lines last but not least we have ir 4.0 and internet of things if we will talk about internet of things internet of everything internet of industrial ir 4.0 and we are using internet of thing everywhere let's move forward what is internet of thing internet of things uh, basically we can connect our smart healthcare via internet of thing for example uh, one patient call to a rescue number then paramedical staff will visit that home and then they will take a patient and they will connect with hospital and doctor can give real time advice to paramedical para staff and they can save human life 
ह्यूमन इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट मेक इट वेरी इजी ड्यू टू इंटरनेट ऑफ थिंग्स हाउ वी विल कनेक्ट वी आर इंटरनेट ऑफ थिंग्स वी कैन कनेक्ट डिफरेंट मोड if we are in a indoor environment such as we are in campus we are at hotel we are at airport we are at hospital we can connect via wifi wifi is also ieee standard it is ieee 802.11 abg and n and it has a specific uh, what we say range on omnidirectional antenna means it can support only 300 meter omnidirectional and support uh, heterogeneous nodes such as mobile devices laptop only 15 devices but if we will uh, will we we notice that in campus and airport if you have a user id or password then many user can log in into one uh, access point but if they can um, many because uh, bandwidth will divide if many user will uh, connect with one access point then we can only browse our email we cannot download or upload or we watch some video as well as a smart grid system okay in a smart grid uh, basically we can use blockchain uh, in nepal uh, kathmandu they use at one village using blockchain uh, and they can uh, using that technology via internet of things then they can share their electricity using blockchain smart environment agriculture suppose uh, we have a date trees you know date tree is uh, grow very slow give fruit dates so we can we can use some uh, sensors and these sensor can give information to control room when this tree need a water when this fruit will be ready we can use uh, internet of things as well as A smart home or a smart city. We can use a smart home. We can save our time. Suppose I will visit my office and I forget to off my aircon or maybe other home appliance. Then I can off from mobile application, Android application. A smart transportation. uh it is also very important uh, normally we say vnet vnet vehicle to vehicle communication already uh, tesla they are working uh, on that one and also mercedes they are working mercedes recently open uh, cargo uh, trucks uh, they can drive without driver also and they can use some technologies and sensor uh, via tracks and they can move forward for example if an accident happen uh, maybe few kilometer ahead then vehicle to vehicle communicate and they can inform to another vehicle okay we had accident maybe you can change the route so then uh, other vehicles can save their time vehicle means uh, those are driving so they can save their time and vehicle to vehicle they can share some contents some movie some audio and video contents via internet and also uh, in future like uh, we have petrol pump in future we have uh, uh, like vehicle stations they can also do particular things as well as let's move forward this chart is very important propagation of uh, total us internet traffic you can see here as i mentioned by 2021 80% of global traffic will be video lightest traffic basically among all traffics we have text sms sms is uh, lightest traffic among all traffics then we have audio video and audio video together and other traffic as well as if you will say uh, audio traffic right now we are using both video conferencing audio and video you can see here uh, if we have audio and video traffic real time we are uh, thousands kilometer from here to there from your university if uh, my traffic or my voice delay more than 500 millisecond it's mean voice over ip or video conference quality not good in one second we have 1000 uh, millisecond so i am talking about half second delay 
you can see real time traffic is very delay sensitive you have to send on time then we have other traffic also ftp web dns telnet emails video and peer to peer networks and other as well as okay future internet research areas basically in future uh, we will use wearable things uh, ieee has another standard it's called band body area network why i refer to ieee because ieee is world biggest organization for professional half million member ieee and each university has uh, each university relate to maybe student branch or sections sub sections so that's why in ieee has half million member more than 2000 conferences scopus indexes and top journals high impact factor journals belongs to ieee and also they have more than 1000 standards basically they are earning they are earning money from there like wimax wifi bluetooth and other technologies as well as so wearable device devices are very important like entertainment fitness smart watch location and tracking as well as then uh, building and home automation basically we have to change according to time like Samsung in South Korea they used to sell rice or grocery as a grocery shop but they change according to time so now they have four, Samsung has 40 40 companies inside uh, or outside Korea South Korea but their main business is uh, mobile technology but they can make from mobile to maybe ship big ships also chemicals and other things as well as in korea lg they used to to make toothpaste later they become they got some technology from hitachi from japan then they become home appliance leader and hyundai as as well as hyundai i already visited four times korea so that's uh, that's my personal experience also i went to hyundai uh, departmental store a mall i i thought maybe they have only vehicles or home appliances they had so you can see how they change like nokia they didn't change that's why uh, less people buying nokia now so we have to change according to time then smart cities nowadays everyone is talking about smart city last month i gave uh, one talk at your neighboring country oman muskat uh, ministry of information and communication technology they had also webinar and it, it was specifically for smart city and covid 19 uh, maybe later i will share with uh, properly that my ppt maybe it will useful for you later we will share with you so smart cities are very important you know uh, nowadays uh, we have covid 19 so we cannot Uh, go outside we have social distance so it's very important like sub, some countries you know internet is very important i would like to say in new zealand they had a survey in 2017 because new zealand is a volcanic country earthquakes come they had a survey okay if earthquake will come or any disaster will come what you need first they said they need only internet first because they want to communicate with their family and other people so they don't want uh, water or treatment they said first we need internet so internet is very important for example uh, since uh, january we have online classes or maybe we become our life become virtual life uh, we are teaching uh, we are online suppose our side internet is good but student side internet is not good maybe they are living in different places some are in city some are in village so that is why internet is very important if we have very good internet connectivity then we can move forward for example in south korea uh, they have uh, 
Wi-Fi free everywhere. And I believe that uh, South Korea is the first country they use 5G. And China, they, they are talking about 6G. And right now we have maybe 3G or 4G right now. So if we have internet, then we can move forward to smart cities. Suppose smart streets, pipeline leaking detections. Like pipeline means sewage line, uh, water line. If we can put some uh, sensors, and these sensors maybe in a few meter distance, uh, if anything happen, leaking happen, then these sensor can inform us. We have pressure sensor, we maybe motion sensor, depend on which sensor. Uh, then uh, we can find a specific uh, location for leaking detection, traffic control, surveillance cameras, centralized and integrated system, and other things as well. Manu uh, smart manufacturing, that is also very important. Flow optimization, real-time inventories, for example, nowadays we normally go for shopping, big shopping malls, and they have a barcode system, and then you will buy something. Of course, they will get automatically their in inventory uh, shortlist, then they will contact to uh, warehouse, and warehouse automatically put uh, these things. So that is also very important. Employee safety, productivity maintenance, Firmware updates as well. Smart health. Uh, humans are very important, and especially you know some developed countries, uh, old population become high, especially in Japan, Germany. Then they have old uh, age houses. They they these type of people they live themselves, and then we have to provide them some maybe uh, smart homes, healthcare then they can monitor themselves and we, we can monitor ourselves also. I will discuss my further slides as well as ambulance telemetry that I have mentioned already, drug tracking, hospital assets, uh, tracking. Like for example, if we have e-health record centralized, in Malaysia we have e-health record. Uh, basically, uh, Malaysia uh, right now, uh, we have uh, different phases for um, uh, Malaysia uh, movement control. Uh, we say MCO, movement control order. It's like something like a lockdown. We had three phases. Now we are in fourth phase. That is recovery phase. Uh, now, uh, basically, we are recovering from uh, what we say COVID-19. Our university is already open. We, we 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 go to our office and but uh, thirty percent employee can go, and our students already at their home. They can uh, we can take their class from uh, from our office or at home, depend on. And also due to these latest technology, e-health and centralized system, that's why Malaysia recover this COVID nineteen. Some countries has very bad situation, especially North America, South America. Europe as well as. Okay, then we have automobile info, uh, informative uh, wire replacement, tel uh, telemetry, productivity maintenance, C to C and C to one. Let's move forward. Today, digital technologies. Basically, today uh, we have a heterogeneous network. We have a wireless sensor network as well as we have mobile application server we have web server we have uh, wi-fi we have six low pan we have physical efficient world and cyber world as well as and processing server and we can use heterogeneous environment those are also mentioned uh, here in my slide you can see here everything is connected with internet of things Okay, 1969, basically, internet introduced by DOD. It, is, it was for only for security purposes. And we are using still TCP IP model, physical to application layer. And nowadays, uh, you know, we have like uh, IPv4, IPv6. IPv4, almost full addressing space, IP addresses. IPv5 die inside lab because they didn't introduce. Nobody knows IPv5, only people know IPv4 and IPv6. IPv6 has uh, auto security, uh, auto configuration, and more addressing space. But 
public and private sector they have uh, they are shy to move to ipv6 because they have to change their equipment not software that's why it's very expensive if they change also we need alternate internet that is called information centric network introduced by van jack epson uh, cisco director in 2010 i will discuss also in detail later <clears throat> Okay, nine technology pillars I are 4.0. Sorry. <clears throat> okay, these are technology achievements of nine pillars like. <clears throat> sorry. Big data and analytics. Uh, data is uh, oil nowadays. Uh, data is very important. Last time we had very less data. Now we can use this data, manipulate this data. we can use data mining suppose i would like to visit maybe uh, ua then i can go for these hotel website or facebook pages then i will see uh, former customers view or comments if they give very good comments then i will go to that portal if they give very bad comments then i will not go so means that is something like a data mining <clears throat> then we have autonomous robotics we have uh, you know uh, japan basically they discourage human emigration because they thought maybe we have more than enough our robots so robotics also very important simulation and augmented reality Simul simulation is very important especially in computer science suppose i would like to say if you are doing some topologies in Uh, so on cisco devices cisco devices very expensive as a university we cannot provide to each student then we can use a packet tracer it is uh, a simulation tool and we can we can do what we want to 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 do on real test bed <clears throat> horizontal and vertical integration industrial internet of things then we have cyber security cyber security is very important i will discuss in uh, ir 4.0 banking because money matters uh, in malaysia basically from uh, my personal experience i seldom we see money i use internet banking i use credit card debit card so that's you know very important if money matter involved in it, on internet cloud cloud computing is also very important because now <clears throat> Uh, we have lot of mobility. Uh, Sometimes, suppose uh, I'm a student, I uh, I can put on cloud maybe on Dropbox, Google Drive, Sky Drive, or other clouds as well as license. Uh, then I can see or watch my download or upload my things via cloud. No need to bring my all devices, desktop, laptop, or mobile, or other things as well as. adaptive manufacturing and supply chain <clears throat> okay fourth industrial revolution basically first diagram was uh, a layman diagram general audience this one is uh, more on computer science or computer or electrical engineering student that they can understand <clears throat> the first industrial revolution 18th century basically as i said to you that is for engine and initial revolution then second one is a mass production through electric energy electric basically also <clears throat> made by ieee inventor ieee basically was last time a meeting place bell graham bell Edison, Nikola Tesla, they sit together and discuss ideas. So that's why electricity also invent by these people in US. Then third industrial revolution, late 20th century. That is uh, that we saw already intelligent information revolution through computer and internet. <clears throat> as i said to you internet is very important if we have internet we can do everything For, before internet we have a, we must have electricity so sometime uh, we say electrical from electrical engineering computer science came so basically after 
electrical engineering or electric we have internet and then computer as well as fourth industrial revolution revolution intelligent information technology intelligent information uh, intelligent information big data internet of things cloud computing so that is everything called iot internet of things <clears throat> you can hear me because i can see only my slide yes sir i can hear you sir okay, okay that's great you yeah, just i want to check because that is virtual communication at least i want to know okay the fourth industrial revolution leading the intelligent information society and digital transform that's very important then we have 5g okay what is uh, we can say uh, what is 1g 4 2g 3g 4g first g is basically without sim card uh, without sim card there is no sim card inside first g means both side need to pay a caller and receiver second g we have sms third g we have mm mms and other things as well as 4g we have lte ip tv voice over ip fifth g uh, we have what we say downloading and uploading speed in terabytes and 6g huawei they said they are going to start 6g that is uh, you know change everything i would like to give you example like last time we use our laptop only now we only use our mobile device because we can perform everything on our on our mobile device we can email we can chit chat we can edit documents we can we can do everything via mobile device so nowadays mobile basically these mobile also something like a computer also because they have processor they have everything and they are nowadays our personal digital assistant <clears throat> the fourth industrial revolution and future society by 20 25 world economic forum said 10% of people wearing cloth and reading glasses connect to the internet like google glasses 1 trillion sensor connected to the internet because these sensors are very cheap very tiny and deploy in remote areas as well as like pressure sensor motion sensor metal detector sensor and other sensor also as well as the first robotic pharmaceutical in the us the first 3d printer car in production the first trans apparent uh, of uh, 3d lever will come driverless cars to 10% of all cars in us 90% of population using smartphones you know we are still using smartphones but uh, because we are living in cities we th we realize maybe everyone is using a smartphone but still many people they, they didn't connect with the internet also didn't connect with a uh, smartphone also and other things globally uh, more trips journeys via cars uh, shaping them in private cars so that one i am not agree right now because due to covid 19 so i will discuss in upcoming slides uh, virtual tourism as well as the first city with more than 50000 people and no traffic lights so these things by 2025 and world economic forum is uh, one of the well known organization they already predict these things joint report of korean government basically they they, they have each country has different ir 4.0 model like uh, europe they have ir 4.0 uh, korea they have uh, uh something future era revolution japan they have a smart society and this and that but in malaysia we follow ir 4.0 and we apply we we are trying to apply everywhere because uh, internet is everywhere computers is everywhere so we are uh, trying to apply everywhere technology high intelligent uh, information tax high quality data infrastructure then we provide high quality intelligent information tax industry 
intelligent information of the whole industry, change of the employment structure, society, flexible labor market, society, social safety net, and growing of uh, creative talent. Currently, New Zealand first country they they are without COVID nineteen, and they encourage their employee to work from home, and they said only four days or five days you have to come. They encourage to work from home still, and they because uh, New Zealand New Zealand is a tourist country, that's why they encourage local tourism. But that's you know uh, to basically give return to society something. Impact all aspects of value chain. The chain management is very important. This uh, value, these uh, honeycombs change the value of our future life. Okay, Internet of Things, uh, basically for environment also, like Internet of Things, Internet of Service, Internet of People, Internet of Data. So these things, you know, everything linked with IR 4.0, like smart grids, smart buildings. For example, you know, <clears throat> we have one university in Malaysia. It is uh, University Technology Petronas. And Malaysia is well known about Twin Tower. Twin Tower is the headquarter of one of island gas company, Petronas. And University Technology Petronas also <clears throat> belongs, to that, belongs to that company. And they have very smart buildings because same architecture made uh, that university. And we say this university is a nut and bolt university. They didn't use concrete. They have metal, glasses, aluminum, and they can open it and fix another place. So smart buildings and they use smart technologies as well as. <clears throat> also, I visited one university uh, in Japan, it's a Wasida University. That is also a smart university in one uh, country is uh, Baku, uh, Azerbaijan, Baku, Ada University. That is also very uh, uh, well uh, organized with uh, latest technologies and smart buildings also. We can save electricity and other things as well as smart home. I already discussed social webs, social networks, and business webs and smart logistics. As I mentioned, uh, Mercedes, they already started smart logistics, smart mobility, and other things as well as. <clears throat> Workforce transformations, uh, basically industry graduates and TVET, these, that, that, that is basically a technical education. Uh, these need IR 4.0. Without IR 4.0, I think uh, everyone is doing degree, but they have to do some special uh, things and then they become different from others or among different from other people. <clears throat> that is uh, one of our research we have done. A smart home for elder, elderly living using wireless sensor networks and an Android application. We, why we use Android application? Because Android phones are very cheap and everyone can buy. That's why we have to see cost of our project. And we use sensors. Sensors are also very tiny, very cheap. Smart home is a common term used nowadays to define a home, a building equipped with special, uh, special system that does some intelligent situations according to situation. It's basically, Smart home means they have a smart appliance, smart uh, means like chair, smart stove, everything. For example, smart CCTV, smart windows. Smart windows means they, they can use a sensor and according to weather, they can uh, open and close also curtains can open and close due to sensors smart doors smart fire alarm because sometimes you know uh, at home or kitchen something happened so at least uh, we can use the sensor and we are using already smoke detector in hotels and campuses as well as then a smart audio with alarm system 
smart massage chair, especially old people, they need a massage chair also. Smart TV and home theater. And how these things connect? Basically, <clears throat> various type of sensor, we can use pressure, motion, heat sensor. <clears throat> this sensor data will go to database. Then it will give us notification to our Android phone, then update data. And then we have signals, of course, digital signals, then filter, and then we have a complete our application. Back and we use dynamic website database and front end we have interface. That is a conceptual uh, model for a smart home. We can use different type of things. And these all things use sensors and also, of course, internet also. Because we can use our Android phone or application. It's connected with the internet, internet of things. This one is uh, something like a more technical line diagram, how these things work, same previous one. <clears throat> then we have uh, our Android application. That is like uh, what we say prototype of our Android uh, smart home internet of things uh, using sensors. Like we can use sensor, control them, greater then we have a different alarm, heat sensor, motion sensor, and other things. And these things can give us some information and this work already published. <clears throat> Let's move forward. You can hear me? Yes, sir. Okay, that's great. Yeah. Okay, that's great. That's great. Uh, because uh, I am using uh, fiber optic, we say unify, so that is fiber uh, connectivity. Because we are talking about future, so that's you know uh, I can give this talk at my office also. Uh, office we are using uh, local area that is also fast internet, but uh, at home we have uh, fiber. Uh, that is I I will explain maybe in upcoming slides. Uh, normally we say FTTH fiber to home. So that's very important for future internet or future future communication. <clears throat> okay. Okay, that's great. That's great. Okay, that's great. Okay, let's move forward. Uh, IR four point zero uh, banking. That is a Cisco uh, chart by two thousand fourteen. They said. Uh, 1998 to 2002, e-banking started. That is also banking has also versions uh, one 1.0 to 4.0. Uh, that's why it is not only industry. It's uh, we gave name industry IR 4.0, but uh, it has for everything like uh, Internet of Things versions, like mobile technology. We have uh, first G to currently 4G. Basically, we are on 4G, not exactly 5G. Then uh, in internet of uh, digital banking, basically dial up experience, email, online, databases, CRM, customer relationship management. Then uh, digital bank 2.0, we have uh, multi-channel integrated like uh, web-based accounts. Uh, we normally say online banking, then pay bill, click chat and other call and other things as well as. Then OMI channels, basically seamless experience, full function, smartphone apps, then can uh, these banking can support a smartphone on desktop uh, interface as well as cloud and other things, big data and 360 customer view. Digital banking, internet of everything, basically that is current, digital bank, digital branches. And we have one island in Malaysia uh, near to my place, it's called Labuan. We have one campus, our university campus also there. That is offshore, okay, offshore island. Offshore means like uh, in Malaysia, we have legal offshore places. <clears throat> and, and on offshore island, <clears throat> basically 
they have online banking. Uh, once time, someone called me from uh, one bank. Uh, he's uh, from Habib Bank, Al Habib Bank, from Pakistan. Because I am from Pakistan, so he realized I am here. So then he called me. I am working in bank. So I say, which bank you are working? So he said, I am at offshore bank. So basically, you can imagine only a uh, one bank branch. They have only one person on bank. That person also from uh, technology or network side. So means no need uh, employ physical employ inside bank because in future because everything uh, online transaction online things. So that's why uh, in future we have internet of everything banking, of course inter clouds and other things as well as. Currently we are using uh, uh, these things these applications. PayPal and other things, uh, and we are very we trust on these things. Okay, descriptions of banking industry. Basically, uh, we have uh, like a data, digital, and distributions. And what type of innovation is it? It is the bank games uh, to win or lose. So we need to change our game. <clears throat> so these questions always ask basically. Uh, in Malaysia, uh, I, I can talk about Malaysia because we depend on too much our internet banking in our ATM machines. And sometimes, you know, uh, our internet banking in a 24 hour, they have to shut down at least for two hours late night to, to rectify errors, to update their system because uh, it is very important, money matters. That is why they have to update and they use Linux based uh, operating system and of course Java based uh, programming and that is why it's very secure. Data is the new oil. Uh, basically why is data is new oil because now we have a new drum it's called big data. Data science sometimes some universities they, in, they introduce a program that is called data science. We recently uh, introduced a program undergraduate program it is called data science first time in Malaysia. In other countries, they are also introducing data science program. And data is oil big because if someone has a data, they can manipulate. So they can uh, they can use this data for multi purposes. Like for example, I said to you, uh, I am very familiar about like uh, Zoom. Sometimes you know we have also we have license, but some organization they have no license uh, version for Zoom or Google Meet then it is free, but it's look like free, but they are getting your all information. They will take your all information, all uh, your video, audio things. For example, Facebook, Facebook free to join, but Facebook has your all information. Like Gmail is free, but they have your all information. They can manipulate, they can analyze multi, in a multi way. Using data to empower customers. So that is ING, one uh, bank in Malaysia. They can use uh, this mobile application as well as, and they can manage, uh, they can manipulate the customer because uh, due to this database, they know the customer, they know the all transactions very fast compared to manual one. So interaction with customer are moving quickly to mobile. That is another thing. Mobile banking, you can see here we have a different years. In different years, uh, mobile banking is more famous than internet or branch. Seldomly people visit branches. Maybe sometimes they will go for open an account or maybe some necessary things. But normally people use mobile banking and internet banking as well as. Internet, uh, basically IoT we can use also for smart Agriculture, IR 4.0. So basically, the, that is one of the future farming. <clears throat> Past, we use some animals for land properly. And then we have some machines, tractor, and other things as well as we use, uh, we depend on manual way, but in present, we are working on 
confused for me either we will go for future fully future or maybe on past or maybe we are using both uh, currently we are using drones drones are very important they can uh, <coughs> capture the crops uh, what we say pictures and also we can use for, for we can use for fertilizer and other things as well as we can monitor our crops and we can monitor weather as well as and future basically we use a data insight basically and future farmers they will stay at their <clears throat> control room or their office they can monitor everything we are sensor we are internet of thing we are smart agriculture and they can manage these things uh, last time i visited uh, netherland in netherland basically uh, one of my friend he said uh, these are smart cattle i say how oh, these are smart cattle they said uh, we have uh, this farm we have a boundary and they will daytime they will go automatically outside to feed themselves at evening they came to shelter and then automatically they can uh, we can take the milk and other things as well as the means more uh, automatic due to these internet of things they have a tag numbers bar everything they can manage everything yeah sensors <clears throat> agriculture 4.0 is about connectivity connectivity is very important and agriculture normally uh, remote areas that's why we need uh, we have a uh, two type of connectivity guided and unguided in guided we can use maybe in a city maybe in a town but unguided normally wireless satellite we can use air we can use water we can use land so normally uh, we can use uh, this unguided satellite network and then we can connect the internet and we can move forward okay data platform enabling in agriculture so basically you can see in future we have a different type of jobs like uh, uh, basically data analytic persons they can use in smart agriculture like database backbone database is very important history is very important and history we can uh, manage via internet and we can use these smart technologies and we can use android uh, things then we can uh, guide farmer as well as that is everything depend on the training and understanding but that is a uh, layman training not technical standardization ecosystem in agriculture 4.0 so that is further detail about how our smart agriculture will work supplier trader administrator then we have uh, elementary and farmer okay tourism and technology i would like to say uh, like malaysia is one of the in southeast asia one of the famous country for tourism basically due to lockdown two things lost basically tourism and airlines same i think in uh, ua they have uh, well known airlines emirates etihad and others as well as in malaysia basically we have one of the biggest low cost airline it's called air asia and it's very famous in southeast asia or other countries as well as and world biggest airport low cost also in kuala lumpur and of course tourism due to uh, covid 19 we close the border now very less tourism and no airlines so we have to change our ideas we will come up with a virtual tourism we can use augmented reality and then we can maybe encourage our tourism on a virtual side like evolving visitor demands sustainable tourism growth enabling technologies travel mobilities that is very important so these online platform we already use for travel information transportation navigation and accommodation as well as 
so i i always use but now it is <laughs> due to covid i think less people are traveling but hopefully everything will be okay in upcoming future then we will come up with uh, again our a uh, new life i recently uh, heard that uh, emirates airline they are using a very specific filters inside their aeroplanes to make customers satisfy so we have to change according to environment according to time so then everything will be safe like in malaysia basically we already started uh, schools so, uh, from july it means uh, with social distance so it means we are recovering but some countries they didn't start or some countries they are confused example one i r 4.0 tourism for example in han and hotel tokyo uh, they are using receptions uh, instead of human they are using uh, robots human shapes robotics and some animal shape as well as in new york they are using uh, safety boxes via robotics so you can see and face recognitions also uh, uh this boxes uh, safety boxes we can recognize via face detection as i mentioned uh, ir 4.0 and tourism also we can use uh, eye glider that is another way of uh, tourism indoor tourism and we are sky jump and we can use uh, these things and these technologies then uh, we can enhance tourism conclusion of my talk basically smart city smart environment smart energy smart agriculture e health retail logistic industrial control everything basically based on internet of things and internet of things basically uh can coordinate or connect with heterogeneous network especially android phones 80% or 85% our phones are android 10% apple or maybe 5% unknown the majority of us we have android phones and android phones uh they are very easy to manage and they are cheap some are expensive also but uh, you can buy very cheap phones and you can manage yourself you can use these facilities special like as i mentioned in like smart healthcare everyone can use these phones smartphones then agriculture also everyone can use telemedicine and healthcare and in future machine to machine will become uh, they can work and wall sensors also so these things basically today my talk uh, conclude now if any question any suggestion because still i am learning so that's like a knowledge sharing session So, suggestion or any question, welcome. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Kashyap. Thank you so much. Uh, any student has any question here? Uh, this is indeed an, uh, a very uh, it's a great opportunity for everyone. So please uh, make best of use of it. Anybody has any question? Dr. Kashyap, I have a question uh, for these students who are now enrolled in creative computing. We are very proud of the program that we offer here under Basma University, and uh, mm -hmm. the entire approach is to connect uh, and blend uh, computing with creativity. So, the, to begin mm -hmm. with, the approach is that these students will be uh, trained in technology, but but also trained uh, with an attitude to use that technology creatively, which aligns so well with the uh, the industrial revolution forward. What, from everything that you're talking about, uh, it's mm -hmm. not just the technology. It's just uh, technology would be just uh, a medium of uh, uh, a medium actually. But ultimately, mm -hmm. these people have to come up with creative. So, what do you, uh, what do you, what suggestions overall? So, uh, in the context of what they're studying and what they're enrolled in right now, what 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 is your uh, suggestion or guidance to them uh, uh, so so that they can actually prepare uh, for future? So I believe uh, these all students, basically undergraduate students, so they yeah. are future generation. They are no uh, better than us because they born in uh, this uh, high tech uh, era, 
and hmm. uh, generation and exclamation so basically uh, they are lucky they use uh, this technology but they have to use uh, this technology on a positive ways uh, like uh, in on education purpose right now suppose due to covid uh, they cannot attend physical class but now uh, due to technology due to these applications uh, due to simulation tools uh, due to open source tools i would like to suggest they can use open source tools because mm. uh, because open source tools uh, give you more uh, uh, ideas more understanding the license they are limited for students they can use also i think in your university you have some uh, license tools as well as and uh, they have to use this technology and then improve themselves as well as Mm. Yeah, I think uh, belonging to the generation, the pressure is also on them because, mm -hmm. they are, they, like you said, they, indeed their exposure is much more. Mm. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Anybody has any other question here, please? To like, I. Yes, 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 sir. Sir. Yes, sir, I can hear you. I have question, sir. How good will the I don't know, pay be for all the different jobs there, sir? Like an estimate. Can can you repeat again? I didn't get how good will the pay be for the different jobs in the IT department? Okay. Okay, basically in IT departments, uh, you know, everyone is doing nowadays uh, this latex technology, like each university has a computer science department. Like everyone is doing a computer science degree, but if you will do some specific things, uh, such as with your undergraduate degree, you can do some certifications some license software what do you say uh what do you say uh, certificates like ccm yeah. ccm and in software like huawei they also uh, they have hana huawei ccna style model so you can go for this uh, certification then you are as a human we are same uh, our knowledge and our degree our Certificates they make us different from other people. I would like to say go for out of box, see out of box, then maybe uh, then you can learn more, and you are different, and then you you have more opportunity to get good job, or maybe you can open your own business as well as. Also, Doctor Kashif, one of the things that we uh, tell our students, and which I we believe in, is that. Uh, with, it, with, for example, a degree like creative computing, uh, mm -hmm. we believe that the future of uh, of these IT graduates is not just limited to IT industry. Mm -hmm. uh, they, it's everywhere. Now, uh, the way the IT and when we're talking about IoT, especially, uh, we're not talking about specifically of very hardcore IT industry. So, what is your reflection on when I say that my graduates can actually go and work anywhere in the world in any industry, from retail to uh, design to IT, of course. So, what is how 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 much do you agree with this, sir? So I agree hundred percent with you because I mentioned already early my slides. Uh, computer science or com uh, these uh, latest technologies, emerging technologies, mm -hmm. uh, it can emerge with every technology for example i went to as a visiting professor at mcmaster university in hamilton canada then i surprised computer science and electrical engineering uh, they are doing cross res for faculty research cross faculty means they are doing research with uh, medical e health because uh, nowadays doctors they are using biomedical instruments Mm -hmm. uh, this technology, I think, uh, in our university also in Malaysia, we, we have a full-fledged university. We have a medical department. We have a collaboration uh, with medical doctor, and they are using this latest technology. They mm -hmm. cannot do anything without uh, these latest technologies, without mm -hmm. uh, these, uh, specialist computer science <coughs> specialists or others. And yeah. I think they can work everywhere. 
yeah because nowadays everywhere this technology you go airport also you go petroleum last time i was working in university technology petronas i think you are also petroleum country so you know our university uh, it's a petroleum uh, petronas mm -hmm. is one of the well known company in malaysia they are working 20 countries so they have a project in pakistan also and i think middle east also as well as so they they have a university you can imagine now petronas petroleum company come up with a university and they have uh, 16 faculties inside uh, engineering faculty and they hire all undergraduate with fully funded scholarship after that they have a full uh, five year bound to work with them mm -hmm. the computer science graduate also work in petroleum companies rigs you know they are deep they are working because simulation tools and other things are necessary nowadays True, true, true. Uh, one more thing. Uh, our, I'm sorry, uh, because I'm, I'm, I'm just making sure that we connect it and this, uh, you know, this uh, rings uh, with the students that we have with us here right now. Uh, our entire mm. program has a, a wide range of modules uh, spread over mm. three years. Uh, mm -hmm. And so we have a width of modules which are delivered over a semester, you know, so three modules uh, a semester. Uh, and of course every every semester is delivered over you know three four months and then the modules change what is your reflection on uh, when you compare the width of the modules to the depth of these modules because obviously every module uh, you can spend you can have phd in, in every every each one of these modules whether it's emerging technologies or design or web development so what is your uh, for undergraduate level for the students that we have here with us what is your uh, reflection on when you compare the width of the module, module to the depth of these modules? Mm -hmm. okay. That is also a good question. Some universities, they have a tri-semester module or some they have a spring or autumn, like our university. Currently, we have two semesters. Yeah, like previous same here. University, yeah, previous university, they have a tri-semester. Tri means mm -hmm. normally in a year, we have a three-semester. Mm -hmm. and. These uh, depend on university to university, especially in Yingling universities, they go for tri-semester. Mm. Uh, but that is compact. You know, it's tri-semester means a small module means not a small because they cover grade hours. Because everything is grade hour in, uh, yes. nowadays. Mm. If they cover grade hours, uh, if they have uh, more grade hours and less time, I believe that that is a smart way because time is enemy. Time is very important. We can mm -hmm. save our time, we can save our student time as well as. So that's why I would like to say that uh, uh, I, I think both ways okay depend on university to the university, depend on like like medical uh, students. Uh, in our university, I, I, that's my personal experience. Uh, we have physical student here right now, medical student in our university. Because they are finally student, they have to do uh, practicals. Mm -hmm. Real, real practical. They cannot uh, be. This cannot be online. Like our student, they can take class online, but uh, these medical student impossible. That's where they have to come. So it depends on both, especially on computer science. I think both ways good. Uh, Tri semester, a small module and uh, big module. But main thing is that uh, grade hours. If we give them proper time, proper grade hours, then I think no problem. Mm -hmm. Sure. Any questions, guys, uh, about uh, industry, your job, uh, your knowledge? I, I must uh, remind everybody here what and uh, recall what Dr. Kashu just mentioned about, you know, self, uh, self initiatives in terms of your certifications. And uh, he said something really nice here that oh, we all are saying uh, only, you know, differentiated with our uh, knowledge and certifications and, uh, you know, other experiences. So that's that's really great. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, Dr. Brain, I think is that uh, I sir. Uh, sir, I do have a question. Ah, uh, great, great. Yes. Uh, Dr. Uh, Kashif, uh, regarding technology, what form of technology would be important to work on uh, for our generation? <clears throat> uh, basically, for your generation, basically, you will work on a wireless technology. Because why wireless? Uh, everything is plug and play nowadays. Uh, like I mentioned that, uh, like last time, I'm not very old, but I'm telling you reality. Last time we used 
for MB drive for floppy drive, but no more. Uh, nobody using uh, now uh, uh, CD CD drives. Nobody using. So changing things are changing. So our technology moving on wireless. So we have to use this wireless technology, and also we have to use a, a move to latest technology such as on fiber optic. <coughs> our solution future solution is a fiber optic without fiber optic we cannot move forward so that's uh, my understanding another thing uh, you know uh, like from for example myself uh, you know i realize after phd education finish no after phd i am still learning you know as <laughs> as a teacher you you have to learn because mm -hmm. or as an academician or as a human you have to learn until finish your life so means still i am learning and how i learn because i do research you i would like to suggest you you also do research on your level suppose you have a final year project you have a maybe subject project you can do in, on, a, on a proper way maybe you have a nearby your uh, units to some industries and then you can collaborate with them and then you can move mm -hmm. forward and I travel a lot. Basically, I'm a travel person. I I never travel as a tourist. I travel always official. I believe that I more than fifty countries I travel. But now you can see how how I am traveling virtually. So now I am in UAE. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, that's a virtual travel. Uh, the, on twenty first, I will give a talk at uh, Un University of. Karachi industry that is on a Comstech that is I think Prof. Broye maybe already know it's Comstech uh, that is one of the biggest Islamic or, or under OIC that's uh, that organization under OIC so I will give talk to there so means I am traveling virtually uh -huh. and yesterday believe me yesterday I gave a talk on a high impact sector publication uh, throughout the world under IEEE platform. So in future, basically, if you need any talk, anything, then I am <coughs> volunteer. Basically, uh, I'm uh, I'm okay if you need any talk or anything. So I, I will I will be more happy. I will give a uh, talk, and we can use this latest technology. You can see we are thousands kilometer far from here, but we are using this technology, and these are safe technology because you have a license. So I think uh, we can use this technology, and we can move forward. Knowledge is power. And that's extremely sweet of you, Doctor um, Kashif. I mean, we really look, and I've been feeling bad already that we missed all these talks, mm -hmm. and we really, really look forward to and. Okay. Uh, to yes. I have one idea. I have one you. idea. If you, yes. if you have a five minute, then maybe I can show you my university corporate video that will give you an idea about my university. Maybe Absolutely, you will be, Yeah, just five yeah, sure. minutes. Sure, sir. Sure. <clears throat> <clears throat> so are you sharing the video? No, stop sharing. I will show you. Yeah, okay. just one minute. One minute. Yeah. Okay, I am sharing with you one minute. I, I will show you on my screen. Okay. What do you think of Campus Live? 
life as a student is an exciting experience. Practicing a culture of knowledge in life. Enhancing self-esteem. Living harmoniously in a colorful culture and socio-economic. Making research and innovation as the basis of success. Generating leadership as competitive citizens. Are you ready for that? Come with us. University Malaysia Sabah, or UMS, is a public higher learning institution established on the 24th of November, 1994. As the ninth public university in Malaysia, UMS continues to move forward as a symbol of educational glory, the pride of this multiracial community in Sabah. Striving to excel towards becoming an innovative university of global standing, UMS is a source of inspiration in the fight for invaluable contributions of knowledge all over the world. Here lies the specialists in engineering, computer scientists, economists, journalists and writers, psychologists, teachers of high caliber, even competent medical doctors. With its strategic location facing the South China Sea against the backdrop of the undulating grandeur of Mount Kinabalu, well adorned with flora and fauna, it becomes an advantage for the best research resources for UMS researchers and students alike. A UMS tries to achieve and help the student to innovation and advancement of technology. To achieve the goals of quality research in line with the national vision. There are 10 faculties in UMS which offer courses suitable to the local and international markets. The faculties are Faculty of Science and Natural Resources Faculty of Humanities, Arts and Heritage Faculty of Psychology and Education Faculty of Engineering Faculty of Business, Economics and Accounting Faculty of Food Science and Nutrition Faculty of Medicine and Health Sciences UMS has two branch campuses, one in Labuan and the other in Sandakan. Labuan International Campus houses two faculties, namely Faculty of Computing and Informatics and Faculty of International Finance, Labuan. As for Sandakan campus, it houses the Faculty of Sustainable Agriculture. University Malaysia Sabah also provides hostels for its students. A comfortable lodge and harmonious surrounding ensure the right frame of mind in the quest for knowledge.
Envied for these natural advantages, QMS fought ahead step by step through its first class facilities for its staff and students. Indeed, UMS now has become the leader in the field of science, technology and humanities in Sabah, a place known fondly as the land below the wind. The results of these researchers met both local and international needs. It is an example of the results of research and development of treated natural local resources that contribute to the economic development of the local population in Sabah. National and international level achievements by our students and academicians. Along with the successes achieved, UMS has signed various memorandum of agreements with other universities, corporate companies, researchers, including local and international organizations. This opens more opportunities for UMS to work in various fields of knowledge globally. Various successes have been accomplished. Various recognitions have been achieved. Our researchers, the focus of the world. Global achievements by our students. UMS is fast moving in tandem with its global modernization as a choice university and committed towards becoming the heart of education set to emulate the global community. Be part of us. Let's together create history to be a leading center of knowledge known internationally. Together, let's reach for our dreams. We are with you. A university for all. University Malaysia Sabah. Hello. Uh, that was great, actually. <laughs> so that is our, this is our campus, basically. <laughs> Yeah, very impressive, sir. Mm -hmm. uh, questions here? Uh... The place looks really nice, sir. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah, it's like uh, you know, I shown uh, this my one of my Hawaii uh, friend, Hawaii US, he came. He said this it is not like a university; it looks like a resort. Resort. Yeah. Well, <laughs> that's how that's beach. Beach. <laughs> it's actually. <laughs> it's it's lush green. Yeah. Uh, cool. Uh, Dr. Brohi, uh, you have some closing remarks here, sir? Dr. Brohi, you can hear me? Hello? Uh, yes, sir. Now we can hear you. Okay. Dr. Kashif, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you, sir. Okay, I have just a few questions, mm -hmm. especially in computing departments. Uh, first of all, what about the your study mode is based on UK or USA? Okay, our study based on uh, UK because we are Commonwealth countries. Okay, that's good. And yeah. uh, do you have any any research journal published by your department, not your university, but by your department? Uh, yes, we have a journal and also we have every year few conferences under IEEE okay. and other things. Yes. Okay. That journal yes. is purely published by the computing department. Yeah. Yes. 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 And uh, this one is uh, approved. By, this is a surely indexed journal and approved by the different standards, IEEE, Scopus and these all things. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, under the web of science. Uh, yeah. That yeah. is Scopus. Yes. It's an impact factor general or non aspect No, that is not impact factor, not, but it is uh, in uh, Scopus and uh, okay. 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 Uh, very nice. Actually, as you mentioned in your presentation, two, three mm -hmm. things are very important. Like you talked about the whereabouts, you talked about the agricultural and these all things are there. For our IT graduates, even they can join, I mean, these all industries like agriculture nowadays that is the e-agriculture is there 
like as you mentioned wearables are there so they can join the e textile industries they can join anything because nowadays basically id is umbrella you know it's emerging technologies so yes. you can i mean uh, consider each and everything under the i mean these it technologies so uh, finally i would like to thank you especially i mean you spared the few moments and very important uh, i mean the lecture and very informative lecture for our students for our faculty especially for i mean uh, the freshers uh, now in future inshallah yes uh, we can even organize a few more i mean uh, webinars under umbrella of uh, you and your university and Dr. Bhavi, we can't hear you anymore. Okay. Hello? Um, yes, yes, you're back. Yeah, yeah. So now the finally, I would say well, once again, thanks to Dr. Kashif. Really, the lecture was, you know, very informative, very important to our students, our faculty. And inshallah, in the future, you know, uh, we are looking to your uh, university, to your department to organize a few more, I mean, the webinars. So once again, I would like to say thanks. Thank you, everybody. Thanks to my faculty, Thank you, especially. Thanks to, thanks to Mr. Thanks to Mr. Basat, he, he are organized these all things mm. and especially thanks to Mr. Iftakhar, our program mm. manager and thanks to all our students. Okay, students, thank you very much. And uh, from my side, okay, take care, bye. Yes, thank you, okay. Dr. Garth, take care, okay, bye-bye. Thank you, and hopefully we will keep in touch. Inshallah, Dr. Inshallah, Dr. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Dr. Take care. Bye, everyone.